They're in English, right? Yeah, like but I, I, I'm the reader, so, okay. okay? Do you feel, do you feel ready? I'm primed. Okay, primed. so, first step, remove the shock from the bicycle. Oh, done. I done. mean, that, that, that's good what job. I even moving my hands. Yeah. <laughs> do not unscrew the spring. Okay. Okay, so. Done. Turn the lockout lever to the closed position. We may do, uh huh, just a second. Do me to. Yeah. Here we go. Perfect. So at this stage, turn the compression knob in full open position. Wow, that's good. You know that some people doesn't know that full open is going anti-clockwise anti towards the minus. Yeah. They do fully open with the plus clockwise. But no, it's not. okay. So far, so good. So, unscrew the reservoir's cap. Reservoir cap. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've, is it that one? Down here. There? Yep. Does that, does that By hand. Yeah. Here we go. Done. Okay, done. So, remove the pressure from the reservoir using the formula pump. Sorry, I have a, such a bad pronunciation for reservoir. How do you say it? Reservoir. Reservoir. It's yeah. French. Yeah. Reservoir. So, Remove the pressure from the reservoir using the formula pump. It can be any pump, to be honest. Okay, that's fine. This is very uh, sensitive step because if you do not remove all the air, uh, we'll do a, an oil shower. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so is uh, the, our pump has a quick release. There we go. Be sure that all air is out. Here we go, perfect. So now you can remove. Okay, position the shock on the vise with the compression knob in upward position. Wow, so far the best one. <laughs> I take some paper towel because we will need them now. We put it here. Okay, going this way. Now, using a T10 Torx tool, remove the screw from the compression knob and then remove the compression knob itself. You ready? Just a second. Here we go. Excellent. Now, using a thirteen millimeter socket wrench unscrew the CTS from the shock body. By doing this, use a paper towel because uh, a little bit of oil may drops. Oh, is that the wrong way right? Yeah, wrong way, yeah. I've not used a torque wrench in a while. Okay, to take it off rather than yeah. doing what you're supposed to do. Oh, I'm going to go too violent with that. The thread is very long <laughs> because it had to, load, to hold pressure. Yeah. 
as you can see some oils coming yeah. out but no oil shower just yet yeah. See how long the thread is on those bits down there now. Here we go, it's done. Now you can remove with your ends. There is an o-ring, so you have to do a little bit of pressure by just pulling it out. Here we go. Perfect. So, there is something I forgot, sorry, that was my fault. Right. Because there was a, a number six before positioning the shock in the vise. So, a few steps ago, it was, yeah, put this back on. So. But that's my fault, it's not going to compromise the process, even at this stage is good. Perfect. So, at this stage, uh, insert 2cc of formula oil in the shock body. So we have a syringe there, which is a standard uh, bleeding syringe. So. Has that got juice in it already or do I need to... No, it's okay, it's okay, because we use only with this oil. No. Has that got stuff in it already? Oh yeah, a little bit, but uh, just put, I mean, uh, it will stay in the syringe anyway, this one, this one go out. So, just refill with 2cc. It's a new syringe, so the piston is a little bit... Sticky. Yeah, it's a brand new syringe. Is that locked? No, no. Okay, just a second. May we do? Oh, there we go. Just yeah. a bit of air lock. Yeah, exactly. Cool. There's quite a lot of bubble in there, isn't there? That will stay up, no problem. Cool. Okay. Two cc. So now at this stage, uh, we suggest 2cc, but it could be even less. But it's better to do a little bit more and maybe then having more oil dropping out when you put the CTS instead of... Okay. You're good to go. It's already very good where it is. So you don't need more oil. Perfect. So insert the desired CTS, which, which can be which orange. Which will give me the lightest uh, compression tube? The gold, the, gold. the one that we <laughs> removed. Okay. So, I'm gonna go with, uh, the, green, the green is the one that probably Joe would use. British racing green. Okay, perfect. So, insert the desired CTS by pushing it inside the shock body. At this point, push until the O-ring of the piston goes into position. By doing this, use a paper towel because a little bit of oil may drop. So now you can put the CTS and it's sort of a click. You have to feel the O-ring in position. But it's easy because, yeah. here we go. Positive click. Positive click. Maybe with more oil in it, uh, the sound yeah, is less pronounced. Yeah. yeah. Screw in the CTS with the 13 millimeter socket wrench torque is seven newton meter torque, which means pretty much. Is that already set to seven? But to be honest, uh, you don't really need uh, a newton, like a torque wrench, yeah. because seven newton meter is pretty much when you see the end of the thread, just stop, do not over tie. Yeah. You don't need that much torque. There we go. You see a little bit of oil dropping. Yeah. 
Here we go. Perfect. Another paper towel here. Now reinsert the compression knob. Trying to get them lined up. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And then reinsert the screw on the compression knob by using a Torx T10 tool. Here we go. Now, because it's a new CTS, and before we operate with the pressure, you, we have to be sure that it's in fully open. So, put this new CTS into, with the compression in the fully open position. Fully it's open. already there because yeah. we, we did it before. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah. but always check. And then turn the lockout lever to open position now. Here we go. And then unscrew the reservoir cups. Cup, reservoirs cup. You might have over tightened it the last time. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Now with the formula pump, inflate the reservoir with 95 PSI. That's important because we made the reservoir air pressure accessible in an easy way, but only because we want to enable people to change the CTS. Yeah. This is not a setting. It's not something that you can say, okay, now I run 100 PSI, 120. Set at 95. Set it at 95. Here we go, 95 PSI. And that's it, at 90. It's okay, if it's slightly more, it's okay, but. We'll go to 100 and then the sun will leak out, right? Yep. Okay, screw the cap of the reservoir back in. You did everything perfect. That's the last step. <laughs> yeah, because it's upside down. Here we go. Maybe in the end we clean a little bit. And that's it. Lovely. So, how many times in your life you did the shim stack of a shock? Never. Oh, you did? That's the first time? Yeah. So, easy. Good job. Was it complicated? No. I mean, I think um, if all the tools had been in the box, then it might have been different it slows everything down but as soon as you said we're going to change it I saw that and was like well that's going to have to come off and I saw that and was like well it's going to be a valve yeah and, you know just I was using my powers of deduction okay before we even started, yeah was like, mm. the, the, the cool thing is that for the CTS of the fork we have a special tool yeah that we sell with the CTS it's the CTS tool but with the CTS of the shock is all conventional tool. It's a Torx, socket, wrench, syringe, and shock pump. That's it. Which is some, and the vise, of course. And as you say, um, because if you have too much, it will come out when yeah. you met, you don't necessarily need the syringe, No, right? no, exactly, yeah. We, we, we say that because it's like yeah, it's easier to do, it's more accurate, but. 
and because we hope that people have also formula breaks so they can use <laughs> yeah, that works. so but it wasn't complicated no. that's that's the most important thing cool